Hey guys, hope you're well. Um, as always, been a while since I've, I've put together a, a video. Um, in all honesty, I've been going through a period of kind of like self-reflection. This will be quite a long video, by the way. I'll put some um, chapters and, and timestamps down below so you can kind of go through it as and way where you see fit. But um, essentially, I've been, been going through a period of self, self-reflection um, as I've climbed multiple wealth brackets relatively quickly um, in, in quick succession over the past couple of years um, and I never really took time to kind of analyze my uh, my position on on the chessboard of life um, so as you climb the ladder of success you kind of unlock different problems um, and because I don't there's no like I haven't got any like mentor or um, there's no like roadmap, at least that I've come across or kind of like books or resources that really like discuss this, that I felt matched my kind of personal situation. Um, so you unlock a completely different set of problems. Uh, instead of trying to earn more money, you m maybe start looking into like capital preservation or allocation and investments. Um, you also deal with people looking to extract resources from you. Um, unfortunately, I do deal with this quite a lot and um, whether that's resources being your time your attention your knowledge um, your like financial resources and this can be family it can be friends it can be uh, employee employees or ex-employees um, and this has very much been something that I've been learning as I go um, so to speak like making a lot of mistakes upon upon the way but people kind of are coming to you looking to extract from you, not looking to build together, saying like you have these resources or you have like this skill set or you have access to X, Y and Z. Let me come together and we can partner on this and do this, this and this. Instead, they're looking for ways to extract value out of you um, as, as an individual. And yeah, this happens kind of quite, quite frequently for me. Um, and then as well, I had to kind of reflect on where I, I was in life because on paper, I am living a life that I kind of always, always dreamed of. Um, like last year, I traveled to 20 countries um, and I've been traveling for, for years, um, literally going, going wherever I want to. However, it's not quite as like as good as it, it's made out to be. Um, and if anything, I was feeling like a sense of being lost um because I, uh, of a lack of routine from from not having like the same gym or the same barber or like being aware of my uh location surroundings because i'm going to new places all of the time you just kind of lack stability um and yeah just not having like a, a routine it means that you spend a lot of time uh building like awareness of like your your surroundings finding restaurants finding places to go to and and so on um and the other thing that I kind of noticed, it's actually taken me a long time to realize this, but I basically travel the world going to different Airbnbs to sit there on my laptop working. Whether I'm in Colombia or whether I'm in Georgia or in London, I end up doing the exact same thing anyway. So is there really like much point in doing it if you're not um, integrating within that, that culture um, that well? Um, I mean, I'm over exaggerating slightly, like, of course, you kind of pick up on like the natural surroundings of, of wherever you are. Um, but I, I would spend 80% of my time kind of do, doing the same thing. And then the other big realization that I've had is around um, seeing diminishing returns from earning more money. And also what I would kind of classify as having an addiction to money that I've recently kind of gained awareness of. And I think a lot of people do actually without realizing it. My goal was to earn $500,000 per month uh, in, in, in profit. Um, and after that, the next thing that I know would have happened is I've, I would have reached that goal and then it would be, how do we get to a million dollars per month? The question is, when does it end? And I think it probably never does. Money is very, very uh, addictive in, in itself. Um, it's the kind of comparison to other people that I think becomes addictive. You, I see this with a lot of high level people. And the problem with greed is that it kind of grows. So I do think that, that you see this with, with yeah, a, a lot of high level business owners. It all becomes very ego driven. Um, look at what I'm doing. Look at this. Da, da, da. Attention, approval, all these um, types of things. And I've read a very um, 
good book that I, I actually go to quite frequently called Outwitting the Devil. Um, it's by Napoleon Hill, and it's a, a book of an interview with the devil, the devil that lives within all of us. So like the kind of good and bad side of each of us, he, he interviews the, the devil uh, in, inside of him. And it goes over these kind of different traits. I'll, I'll go over them at, at another time. And then, yeah, just to go a little bit more into like ego. So there's a really, really good clip on a podcast of uh, Guy Ritchie. Um, that I'll, I'll probably link in the description that I go back to quite a lot talking about the talking about ego like your kind of inner world of energy which is your true self who you really are and then like the kind of voice that we have in our head like the outer world of energy who we want to be seen as who we project ourselves to be to the world and you can see this very apparently uh, very clearly on on Instagram you can see the type of person that people want to project that that they are to to the world um and again it all just becomes very like um ego driven so without getting too spiritual just not not comparing yourself uh, to to other people um you you should be making decisions based on what is right for you not is not on, on what makes you feel better or that you're out competing the people around you who cares um not feeding your ego so you can do this in like a, a lot of different ways, but just being very careful that you're kind of um, operating in line with your true wants and desires, not just um, n not not your ego. Um, yeah, so don't make like ego driven uh, decisions. Um, and there was a great quote that I came across that money is a good servant, but a bad master, simply meaning have your money working for you, not you working for, for, for your money. Um, and then as well, I had a video pop up from Iman Gaji, um, who I have been following for a number of years, although more recently, like his content isn't really tailored towards me, it's tailored towards people looking to make their first like 10k per month online, which is completely fine, that's where kind of most people are at. Um, but he had this video of him just sitting in the back of the car, there was no fancy editing or no nothing, and I do often find that fancy editing uh, not picking on him at all, but just in general, can kind of be put in place to um, to mask the fact that the content or what you're saying isn't actually that that good. Um, which is why, like, I generally don't worry about like editing at all. Uh, maybe some people think differently. Uh, maybe editing would improve the quality of my videos a lot more. But I think that people come to me for value in the videos, which I will try to deliver as like succinctly. Um, as, as possible um, and generally people's concern isn't that I have like some fancy titles or, or whatever um, but anyway I came across a video of Iman and this was filmed on his phone I think with no editing and just like a very real seven minute talk discussing the most happiness that he has that he achieved like financially was coming from him getting his th first 10k per month which I would completely agree with I think that's where most freedom comes in your life and then maybe getting up to like 50k or 100k I can't remember exactly what he said and then the other thing that he said that was so um kind of profound to me was if people knew the reality of his day-to-day -day life people would not want to swap positions with him and I think that there's a lot of truth to that statement if people actually knew the reality of as you become more and more famous um, as you make more and more kind of money um, the reality of like a day-to-day -day of being there the higher up you go I would actually say like the worse it gets and again you're just experiencing like diminishing returns so he's talking on like an aspect of dealing with all sorts of problem in the business, uh, being at the level that he's at now with like the fame that he has now, dealing with significant security threats. So um, he mentioned that he spends like 250K per month on security. And now if you kind of watch his uh, videos, again, this is just, I'm just giving this as an example. I'm by, by no means like hating on him or uh, anything. Like, I've, like I said, I've been a, a follower of his for, for a very long time. Um, now you see he's kind of going around like buying a lot more cars just kind of almost looking for things to spend this money on and it get, gets clicks and it gets attention which leads to conversions which he makes his money back on i'm fully aware of this kind of formula but i would say that it's not really like true to true to yourself uh, true to his self at least because 
in his own words, he's not really like in, into cars, but now a lot of his videos are just around like saying that, that you've bought some, uh, bought a new car. Again, I get it to like bring in clicks and bringing in the conversions, but um, as you have more money, you just kind of find more things to waste it on. And I've also noticed this in, in my own life as well. Um, the other problem with money is it's only interesting to earn more money than you have done before. So you're in a constant kind of competition with yourself and if you're not in a competition with yourself, you're in a competition with the people around you. So it becomes very, very ego driven, which is something that I've been exploring a lot more recently as well. And again, I just think it leads to this kind of downhill spiral of why do I need this money? Um, like what, what difference does it make if I make 100,000 per month or if I make 400,000 per month? What is the difference uh, to, to the, the quality of my life? And the truth is, is it just becomes very ego driven. It's you're operating in a realm of comparison against other people, not operating from like your true self, what you truly want out of life. You're being caught up in comparison in the battle of, of egos. So another really good thing is I've um, discovered that like previously my kind of question in life would be, does this make me more money? So I would ask myself this all the time. If I'm doing a task, does this make me more money? Does this make me more money? And I would structure my life as like my hourly rate would be a thousand dollars per per hour. So does this make me more than a thousand dollars per hour? Whereas now I've changed that question to, does it improve my quality of life? Does what I'm doing right now improve my quality of life? Which I think is a much more powerful question to, to ask yourself. Does what I'm investing my time in right now, does it have a direct improvement into my quality of life? Um, the other thing that I really noticed is by being so obsessed with work, and I mean sitting down for minimum 12 hours per day, often 16 to 18 hours per day, sitting down in front of a laptop, hunched over like this. It's not good for health. It's not good for anything. Um, and the last years of my life has kind of just fly, have flown past me. Despite me traveling a lot, again, I just sit there on a laptop working all day. I'm, I'm creating accomplishments, but I'm not creating memories, right? I'm, because like the day is just kind of melt in into one another and before you realize it christmas is here then it's like the middle of summer again i'm still working and before i re realize it again christmas is here again and i think fuck a, a whole whole year's gone by and again i have financial accomplishments from it but i i haven't made memories and just uh, if if you've read top five regrets of the dying uh, one of the biggest regrets is of the second largest regret is of spending too much time working. I can't think of anything worse than like laying in your kind of deathbed and uh, you have all this money, but but what memories do you have? What have you gone out and, and done, done in the world? Um, what experiences have you had? You've traded for all this time for money. And again, I, I don't regret it. Like I've built a fantastic life for myself. Um, Again, I just feel I'm kind of at a, a fantastic level and there's not really much, much higher for, for, for me to go. Now I'm like, <laughs> it sounds so almost like feminine, but yeah, I, I want to spend more time like creating memories, having a, a great life experience. The other thing with life is I think that we all, all truly um, take it for, for granted, um, this, this life that we have. Who knows what's going to happen? I've been in car accidents before. Uh, luckily, I, I came out completely unharmed. I, I had a, one of my cars explode on me, uh, literally set on flames in front of me, uh, which was actually a near-death experience because I, I did I lost control of the car. Fortunately, everything was fine. But we kind of take life for granted, and you know we all expect that we're going to get a good seventy or eighty years, even now with modern medicine, that maybe we'll, we'll get more. A lot of people die in their forties, fifties, uh, health complications unexpected whatever um accidents all types of things i much prefer to spend my to spend my life in this way where now i will go and spend more time just working on projects where i have, take very high leverage positions make very smart moves and spend the rest of my time in a state of enjoying my life and and uh, exploring um and, and learning which i really really love to do
I, I really don't care about like showing off at all, particularly on like these types of matters. But in, in some months, like I've earned uh, maybe just shy of half a million dollars per month, so over four hundred thousand uh, dollars in a month before. And I've had days of making like eighty thousand to a hundred thousand dollars in a day, and unfortunately, you get like diminishing hits of dopamine, diminishing hits of uh, feelings of, of satisfaction. Of now, if I earn ten ten k in a day, ten thousand dollars doesn't make any difference to my life. And let me just clarify as well before I get deeper in, into this kind of subject. Um, I do actually understand that this video and me even like talking about these things will maybe like isolate me somewhat or people are going to be thinking like what the hell particularly the people who are um aren't earning uh who were looking to make their first 10k per month online um it, th this video definitely like won't won't resonate with but perhaps in a few years once you have um like kind of built up and kind of earned more money um and had these like high numbers you you, you will understand exactly like what what i'm talking about um, but yeah, I don't mean to like have a, a, a sense of it's not a lack of appreciation or a lack of like I've worked very, very hard. I've sacrificed the last 10 years of my life working pretty much seven days per week, definitely more than 12 hours per day on average, a lot of times 18 hours per day. And I do mean literally 18 hours per day, which means sleeping six hours per night. And when you wake up, the first thing you do is start working and you work till you fall asleep. And I've done that quite a lot. And um and it is, I've sacrificed a lot of things. I've sacrificed my health, my relationships, both um, personal, family, uh, in order to kind of get, get to where I am. And it, it's also not me saying that I um, want to go and like sell all of my belongings. Uh, people will say money doesn't buy happiness. Again, I would say there's diminishing returns. On the lower levels, I would say it definitely does. You can buy yourself into a pretty good position in, in life. Um, so anyway, but back to Iman, and then the other like risk that kind of, of kind of comes with it is being the king of a hill in the in a particular domain. So with his domain being like SMM, there's like a lot of people who kind of want to be where where he is, um, but they perhaps don't understand like the realities of like the day to day of what is of of what it actually takes or what goes on. And then in my space, like again, not to kind of um, speak too highly of myself, but being like a figure. A known figure without a doubt within the um, OF space comes with its own inherent risks and there's a lot of people who I think have seen me publishing videos or other people publishing videos on YouTube and I've spoken about opportunities that came with that as well and they kind of jump on it as well without thinking about the kind of consequences that, that come with that and I, I did think about this a lot before I ever kind of jumped on to um, producing content about this space is it a risk that I'm willing to take? And I just think that a lot of people maybe haven't fully thought it through. Guys creating content in the OF space now maybe haven't thought through the risks and the um, they haven't considered what comes with, with the territory. And even to the point now that there's guys like making videos uh, showing off that they're in Dubai and operating this business, which I feel is very, very, uh, a very unnecessary risky move to make uh, in a country where it's illegal um, to be like very very careful about um, operating such a business um, yeah it, but why choose a country where it's illegal to operate from and then talk publicly about you operating an illegal business doesn't doesn't re really make sense to me uh, just an unnecessary risk again um, and then also, like, we've kind of seen what's happened to, to Andrew Tate. Um, and again, I'm just very consciously aware that, like, the tallest poppy gets cut first. You, you make yourself a target. I get interview requests and I, li I deny all of them from Bloomberg, various different, like, publications. I've been invited on huge Twitter spaces and I saw some other guy instead accept that invitation and made like an idiot out of himself and, and the industry. Of course, everyone on the space was against him and the industry and he couldn't even explain it properly. Um, so there's not too much uh, positive that comes anymore. Number one, from me being in the spotlight of um, of this space. Most of the benefit that I get is it currently comes through through networking, through the meeting of people. And so just back onto that. So like that is also part of the reason why like I 
draw back on, on my uh, content a little bit. You'll also notice a lot more of my content more recently is back to being focused on like automation, productivity, uh, life setup, which are all topics I'm really interested in. And it's kind of how this channel started out. Still sticking on like marketing, but it's not being so specific to, to OF. Um, um, particularly this type of domain, which has a lot of stigma attached to it. And we could look at examples of, for example, Andrew Tate, if he hadn't continued with all of uh, creating videos and so on, he could have retired a very, very wealthy man um, without like uh, attracting like further attention and maybe could have avoided the predicament that he's in. Maybe he feels that he's on like a higher journey that is more important to him than just kind of um, deciding he's made all this money, he's achieved what he wanted and stepping back. Perhaps he truly does want uh, want something more than this. He, there's something um, more meaningful that he's aspiring to. And I completely respect that, by the way. I think every, uh, this isn't me telling other people what to do. This is simply me documenting and sharing my own journey and my own experiences from climbing the ladder of success and like what I'm kind of experiencing now. Um, so anyway, like at the start of this financial year, my original goal was to be making half a million dollars per month in profit. And I was quite sure that that was what I kind of truly, truly wanted. And however, as like I kind of got into the year, so about two months into this year, I was feeling, um, just feeling a little bit like unsatisfied and again i was making like great money i'm in like a fantastic situation i i'm uh, traveling around wherever i want to and so it took me some time to realize i had to kind of dissect a lot of things but i realized it was that i was simply pursuing the wrong goals and there were a few things that kind of, of kick kick this off for me um so i've been having a lot of meetings with my business partner's brother and um he is He's an investor, um, just to give like context, I think his net worth is over a million dollars. Um, and he also runs like an agency on the side. It's not trying, it's a WordPress development agency. So it's not trying to be sexy. It's not trying to be uh, cutting edge, working with AI or all this different stuff. He's been running the business for about 10 years and most likely it will continue running for another 10 years because he's servicing non-technical markets. Um, just older guys running like kind of brick and mortar businesses, as we would say, and they just know that they need a website and an online presence and he just outsources the work. He works a couple of hours per week, probably one of the only people that I know actually who has genuinely achieved something like the four hour work week, which I think a lot of us kind of set out to do. It was definitely one of the books that originally inspired me into entrepreneurship. But as soon as I got the taste for money, the four hour work week went out the window and instead of me thinking I can live this easy life, it was me thinking I can put all these other hours in my week into earning more money. And that's exactly what I've done. Um, so he has like a very interesting life structure of, he, he, he works about four hours per week, replying to emails and just being active in like a few conversations, but he doesn't really do any work himself. Uh, I think his agency probably does like 30, maybe, maybe 40K per month. And the first time I met him, I was kind of talking to him and giving some, him some like feedback on how he could like, like other things he could be exploring, right, uh, to, to make more money. And he just kind of came back to me and said, what difference does an extra 10K make to my life? Um, and I, I was kind of arguing with him about this point of like, what, what do you mean? And, and like we were going back and forward and we had a really interesting discussion about this. And I realized he, he was actually right. Um, an extra $10,000 per month you would go to the same places, you eat at the same, once you're past a certain level of income, you go to the same restaurants, you eat at the same places, you travel to the same destinations, you're flying first class, you stay in the same villas, um, you stay in the, like, the best hotels, are like about $2,000 per night, depending where, where you are. Um, there's very little unlocks that you achieve by actually earning more money. So again, it falls back into my thesis of just seeing like dim diminishing returns and it was him who kind of highlighted this to me and he is someone who um i think he, he would even agree with this i guess success depends on your definition um is it purely financial or what is it but i was feeling envious of someone who i think most people would consider to be less successful than me which was a first time experience for me so he wakes up kind of whenever he wants. Um, and not that I'm envious of this entire setup, by the way. Uh, I actually prefer a little bit more structure that, than he does. 
He goes around walking every single day, listening to audiobooks, listening to podcasts, studying financial markets, studying debt, studying the banking system, studying um, psychology, uh, health, like literally anything, just absorbing tons of, of information. So I recommended like a couple of books to him and he came back to me the next day, like read it, came back with a few points on this book. How many people do you know that are able to react so quickly to... Um, Maybe, so, maybe you give someone a recommendation for a book and, and it will take them like months or maybe they never read it. Whereas he's just, um, he'll download it and listen to it the next day and just message me, it's done on like a, a 2x speed. Um, and so I actually kind of copied this. So whenever I, I hear of people's like life setups, I often like to try out different people's life setups. Maybe you've seen, uh, for example, like a, someone following Jeff Bezos's morning routine for 30 days. I don't mean like that. I mean more like, entrepreneurs and people that I meet. So I, I kind of copied his, um, his structure of life. So going around walking for about four hours per day, where, um, finding like some hidden little coffee shops, you'll go in there, you, when you're hot, you get a coffee uh, and, and a sparkling water or whatever. Um, and I've been really, really enjoying this kind of life setup of taking like a step back from the um, day-to-day tasks and just working with like a, a lot on like education and, and exploring like new new opportunities. Um, I realize this is all a bit all over the place by the way but I, it does all kind of come together um, but I just wanted to kind of touch on the different points and explaining my uh, thought, thought process behind this. Um, the next thing is being ego driven. So I just Another thing that I've realized is a lot of my kind of motivation on that half a million dollars per month, it was purely ego driven. And the reason for it is because I know of people making more money than me that I would consider myself to be far more clever than, um, but the numbers don't lie. And so it becomes almost a game of like that you need to prove yourself against other people. I have several friends making $2 million plus in, in profit per month. Um, and it would be a, it was a very ego kind of driven thing that I need to be pushing to, to that level. Uh, I need to be scaling. I need to be doing this, da, da, da. which is a very, very bad uh, way to live your life. You're living your life in comparison to others. And there is always going to be someone more successful than you are. So you're basically making a deal with yourself to be more, um, to, to always be unhappy until you're the most successful person in the world, which is a very, very slim chance of that happening. And you can get kind of caught in this, not even like the rat race of the nine to five, but the rat race of the hyper successful. Um, and there was a podcast that I listened to the other day of Luke Belmar, and he came out with this phrase of um, when he's not feeling motivated, he just looks at who is he comparing himself to. But the problem with this analogy is you're always there's always going to be someone doing better than you and even if you're like the chances of him becoming the richest person in the world are very low but you're kind of making a deal with yourself that you are going to work until there's no one for you to compare yourself to and then when you're at the top of this hill and you look around and realize that you've traded all of these years in order to be in in this position um i don't think that that is a it's not a trade-off that i would like to make i would not trade to be in in that position i would not trade lives with Elon Musk, for example. Like the, the uh, I think he's not even the richest anymore. I wouldn't trade lives with the richest man in the world. Genuinely, I, I would not. And that, that's a really interesting question to ask yourself as well. Who would you trade lives with? Who are you envious of? Who is in a position that, that you would like to be in? And for me, it's not the hyper rich guy. It's not the guy driving around in Lamborghinis and uh, in Dubai, like renting cars or even buying cars and wearing like a Richard Mill. Uh, it's not um, not that I'm. You should do whatever makes you happy, and it's not that I'm even like hating on on, on this as well. Do whatever you want, but I don't like. I can go and do that stuff, and and I I don't feel that I I need to. It's just not in line with uh, with with who I am. I, I don't feel that I need to get attention or respect to people by showing off how much money I have, or that I can uh, like drive around in, in this car, I much prefer to get um, respect off of people for what I'm doing, for my achievements, for um, being smart, for sharing this stuff on YouTube, um, like things, things that I'm working on and so on. Uh, and that is how you can like gather respect off of people. And because that also really changes the type of people that you attract. If I'm um, posting videos of me like driving around in a 
Lamborghini. It's very much the same with, with women, in fact. How you attract someone will really determine the nature of your relationship. If I attract a woman to me through money and through showing off this particular lifestyle, our relationship will, will be very centralized around of that. Whereas if, yes, she knows that I'm successful, but she's attracted to all of the different um, accolades that, that come with that, um, being hardworking, being smart, um, making good decisions, being ambitious, um, being tenacious, uh, going after like what I want. Um, these are all very good traits for a woman to look for in a man. So I much prefer that she sees these things within me and that is why she likes me. And the success is a byproduct of, of that um, rather than a woman who's purely motivated in, uh, in you as a, a financial resource. And the same goes for people. Why do people like you? Why do people like follow the type of content that you're posting? The type of content that you're posting is going to change massively. If you're attracting attention because you're showing off like this life that, that, that you're living, um, I just, yeah, I, it just doesn't al align with me. Um, for example, I had a guy who was trying to partner with me and he was suggesting that I go to Dubai and do a, a video shoot and like a photo shoot in like a driving around in a Lamborghini. I just told him, no, this is not me at all. I much prefer to deliver value. People, if people, if my, uh, what I've done and what I'm doing and the things that I talk about, if they resonate with people and people respect what I'm doing, that is how I much prefer to, um, to, to, to connect with people. Uh, um, and then again, I'm just kind of looking more and more into looking at people of who am I envious of? Who am I jealous of? Uh, who do I wish that I have more of like a life setup like? And it's not these people earning more money. It really, it really isn't. Like, I found that I was far more envious of a guy who truly had complete time freedom, complete location freedom, and complete financial freedom. He's able to buy what he wants. His passion is like Michelin star restaurants, spending anywhere from like six hundred dollars for himself to like two grand for himself, like per per seat. Um, and he's able to do that to fly wherever he wants. You're flying first class. You're staying wherever you want. Um, and as much as I have achieved financial freedom a long, long time ago, um, and also had achieved location freedom, I hadn't achieved time freedom. I was still getting pulled in to business, dealing with day-to-day -day fires, dealing with um, like scaling businesses, all in the pursuit of earning more money. And again, what is the purpose of, of earning more money if it doesn't unlock anything new in, in my life? So also about like not feeding your ego so i don't mean to make this like too spiritual but there's a really really good clip by guy ritchie on a joe rogan podcast um i'll link it in the in the description uh where he talks about an inner world of energy which is you your kind of true self uh who you really are and then your outer world of energy which is who you are projecting out to the world who you want to be seen as who you want to be recognized as maybe you want to be recognized for being very uh, good looking or for being very smart for being very rich whatever it may be you can notice a lot of the stuff and how people dress or particularly how people construct their instagrams um instagram is kind of very much a, a portrayal of the outer world of energy often very fake and misaligned with that person's kind of true self um so just making sure that these decisions are kind of coming from a kind of true to you because everyone's definition of success is very different and again i'm not saying that I have like the right answer, but it is the right answer for me. But maybe your definition of success is, is very different. Perhaps your goal is to be just a, as wealthy as possible, um, purely to win like the competition of, of having more, more money than, um, than the people around you for kind of proving a point, which again, is completely fine. Um, but yeah, making decisions that are completely like true to yourself rather than feeding your own ego, which is a game that I was realizing that I was playing Again, not intentionally, uh, it's kind of taken me a long time to, to realize this. Um, but yeah, feeling of envious of, of someone that I was more successful than was like a very uh, strange, strange feeling. He, he should be envious of me. And in a way, I do actually think he is, which is like the kind of weird thing about our, our, our relationship. Um, he's envious of my life in different ways and I'm envious of his in, in different ways. Um, and it's not obvious, uh, not, not um, common. Um, for me to be uh, envious or jealous of, of other people's life set. So, and how, how does this kind of translate? Like what actions am I kind of taking for this? So I've come up with a kind of formula and um, that I'm going to be like trying out or, or going to be transitioning to. 
Um, and with all big decisions that I tend to make in my life, I try to look at what is the ability for me to reverse this decision. How easy is it for me to reverse this decision? So if I'm wrong, um, how how easily can can I get out of this? And really, it's very very easy to do. So there doesn't there's not a huge amount of weight or kind of friction coming with me making this decision. Um, an example would be of like traveling. The worst case scenario is you don't like the place you go to and you buy a flight back for $500. So it's a very easy like risk reversing. Um, that being a simple example. So I've decided to reduce my, this is a very strange thing to say as well, but to reduce my desired level of income to $50,000 per month, bearing in mind I earn far far more more than this like six figures plus per month um and have done for the past two plus years um and before that i was also earning like relatively good good money so choosing to reduce my like ha- like like my income to fifty thousand dollars per month and it doesn't mean that i'm going to like stop everything to bring down to that exact number what it means is Anytime I'm above that number, I'm kind of pulling myself away from work. Um, I no longer feel a need to work. And anytime I go below that, it's time for me to go back into the back into the business, um, you know, back into like the, the day-to-day stuff on, on growing the income again. Uh, that is like the level of income that I am kind of uh, happy with. If I'm earning more than that, I, I'm not complaining. All I mean is when I'm above the 50K per month range, I no longer trade my time for, for money unless there's some form of like emergency um, that really and truly needs my attention. This, by the way, I'm always talking in profit when I'm talking these numbers. So when I say 400K per month or making 50K per month, I mean that is the final figure of money that will come in, that comes into my bank account every month. That is my minimum level, uh, acceptable level of income. And I get, for some people listening to this, going to think, what the hell are you, are you talking about? Like, uh, of course, at 50K per month, it's like a, a, a dream. Like, anyone should be happy at that level of income. And I think you're completely right, which is why I'm choosing to, to, to make this decision of no longer exchanging my time for money, which I have done uh, for, for a, a, a long time. Um, and then there's people who are going to be earning far more money than 50K per month who are also, for different reasons, going to be... Um, I don't know, maybe like shocked or surprised by, by this decision. Um, what is the reason behind this? Not trading a finite asset, time, the one thing that we can never actually buy back. Um, I can optimize my life. I can try and be smarter with how I spend my time, but there is no way for me to buy back time that I have spent. So why on earth would I trade that for money, uh, an infinite resource? Again, I don't need to go into it, but uh, I'm sure a lot of people know how the financial system works and that we can just em- uh, endlessly print infinite amounts of money. Um, overcoming like a- an addiction to money, so no longer letting money be the master of my life. I don't mean an, an addiction like if I don't have money, I'm on the floor, but just know that, like I'm you know, having withdrawal symptoms. I mean an addiction in terms of I am pursuing something when I realize that it no longer serves me, which is the definition of an exi- uh, of addiction that it has negative impacts on your life uh, and and you're aware of that, but still you continue to pursue the same behavior. Um, And so for uh, an example of that would be, I sacrifice my health in the pursuit of more money um, and and have done for a long time. However, I've changed that very, very recently. Uh, The next thing is only really focusing on like $10,000 per hour tasks. So again, this isn't me saying that I'm not going to be working at all. It's just me saying that I'm only interested in working on very, very high leverage uh, things and there's one thing that I really like which is ten thousand dollar per hour tasks so if any of you haven't come across this concept the idea is that you have ten dollar per hour tasks they can be handled by a VA your admin your cleaner you're able to hire someone to do those tasks for ten dollars or less per hour they're put in the ten dollar per hour task category range a hundred dollar per hour task they would be a little bit more specialist maybe a software developer maybe a designer maybe a marketer um, anyone that maybe, yeah, it's a kind of specialist skill, but you can hire for below $100 per hour. That is a $100 per hour task. Then you have a $1,000 per hour task. Now you're getting a little bit more interesting. This could be kind of CEO, CTO level, COO level, um, like operations manager, um, maybe some very, very good project managers uh, or program managers um, that are overseeing a lot of key areas of your business. They would be put in the $1,000 per task range. Um, and then the highest level is $10,000 per hour tasks. So what that means is 
generally it's quite hard to make ten thousand dollars per hour i'm not able to trade my time and receive directly that hour ten thousand dollars back cash in hand however through leverage there are a lot of opportunities within like all businesses of if you do this today over the next three months maybe six months maybe a year it will generate you ten thousand dollars so some examples of tasks such as that would be hiring again just to keep the math very simple let's say i hire a salesperson and i spend eight hours training them on what to do and over the next six months they make me they make me eighty thousand dollars that would be a ten thousand dollar per, per, per hour task i mean maybe they make us a hundred thousand dollars minus their salary they're generating me ten thousand dollars per hour and over the next year it equates to be even more than that so then you can look at like the next form of leverage that would be maybe I, instead i hire a recruiter and a sales manager or sales trainer so the recruiter builds out a system where they hire people and bring them into uh, the training program done by the training manager um, and then the training manager oversees them and manages them so and that that for me could be way higher than a ten thousand dollar per hour task um, because i've just invested in hiring those those people um, they've come into the business and now they're able to make me money uh, autonomously um, so that would be an example of hiring and another example could be through systems so um, you have ideas and you build out uh, workflows and standard operating procedures that you then give to the team that you then have 30 people working off of um, or how big your team is um, and by you spending a couple of hours on building out this system uh, each of those people only needs to make you uh, an extra like $300 in order for that to be a $10,000 um, per hour task. Uh, three, um, $333, they would need to make that to be a $10,000 per hour task. So there's tons of kind of different opportunities um, in, in ways that you can kind of leverage um, and achieve $10,000 per hour tasks. Content is also a great one, um, like it's part of the reason I do do this YouTube stuff. Um, I can't say it's a $10,000 per hour task for me, but it does now bring me significant benefits, not in terms of direct revenue, mostly in terms of opportunities being unlocked and people that I meet, networking, um, YouTube is essentially leverage networking. If 2,000 people watch this video right now, the other alternative is that either I get on a stage and I talk to 2,000 people, but that has its own um, series of problems that 2,000 people need to be in the same location all the time. I can only do the show once. Maybe people are busy that day. Da, da, da. Also, I'm probably not a good, um, <laughs> not, not good on stage. Or I have this conversation 2,000 times with 2,000 individual people and how long would that take? YouTube is the best form of leverage networking that I have, have ever come across. Um, which is the main reason for doing this. Those of you that have been following me for, for a long time, like long before the OF days, bearing in mind, I think I've been doing YouTube for, I think about seven or eight years now, um, documenting my journey as, as an entrepreneur. Um, I think that they will know that my primary focus is on like delivering value. There's a lot of different, a lot of different $10,000 per hour tasks um, that, that you can kind of focus on. So I'm trying to exclusively focus on these. So really focusing on building systems and automation, which by the way, is going to be the direction this channel is going more into, um, is me, the systems and automation that I use and able to kind of build out this, this lifestyle um, to literally fire myself for, from my own business. And this applies equally well to anyone who is kind of starting out as well to like the very senior business owners, uh, people making great money already. It's what I really like about this. It is equally value, uh, valuable to, to everyone because business owners in most cases haven't systemized themselves out of their business. In many cases, they don't know how to. Um, so it's not a case of not wanting to, they don't know how to. So of course you can learn how to do it and how to implement the, these uh, automations and systems or maybe just get some ideas and inspiration on things that I implement. Um, but also for the people looking to make their first money online um, or making the, the, make their first $10,000 per month, uh, I believe that there is a huge opportunity for becoming a systems builder slash systems integrator slash process expert, whatever you want to call the, the job title. Entrepreneurship is now such a, a, a um, common 
uh, role and job for people to kind of go into. They want to run their own business, but they have no idea how to automate themselves out of their business. So instead of becoming like a copywriter um, or like a, a logo designer or like a social media manager or a, um, like whatever, like insert whatever, like generic thing, like an Amazon FBA guy, you're going into what hundreds of thousands of other people are doing already. And there's a very low barrier to entry, uh, which means there's huge competition. Instead, if you learn the basics of kind of systems building and uh, uh, how to build out and implement processes through automation and through people, um, you can go to a business owner and you could even look at taking a percentage of a company to automate someone out of their job uh, in like an advisory role and you implement this stuff for them uh, to kind of build out systems. But you could also just charge very healthy fees, far more than a, a copywriter um, would be able to, to achieve by going to a CEO and saying, let me shadow you for a couple of days and I will uh, automate like 80% of, of, of what you're doing through building systems, be it through people or through staff. Uh, and you could charge even an hourly rate or like a large upfront fee. And depending on the size of the business and how, how highly the CEO values his time, um, there's kind of like no downside for, for, for this. So to go into businesses and implement like processes and systems, if you can establish yourself as, as an authority within this space, um, there's a ton of opportunity that, that gets uh, unlocked. And yeah, and so again, just setting my kind of baseline for me to kind of maintain the quality of life that I, that I like, um, I've set myself just $50,000 per month. Above that, again, I, I'm not complaining if I'm earning more money, I'm just no longer willing to exchange my uh, time for money uh, uh, above that, that level. Um, and it also doesn't mean, so I'm just going to continue as well, it doesn't mean I'm stopping at 50k per month because I'm also transitioning now more into investing. But we'll move on to that in, in just a moment. Um, again, like just working out that my ideal life, my true dream life is having true time freedom, true location freedom and true financial freedom. The other problem with money is that it's it's kind of only interesting to earn more money than you have done before. In order to get like a dopamine hit or some level of excitement, you need to be pushing the boundaries all the time. And the more money you earn, the more that kind of becomes a problem because you either feel that you're stepping forward or you're um, kind of not, not progressing. Um, something like being in, in the gym, but kind of not seeing any results or just being able to maintain a, a physique that, that you kind of had before. So I guess that's a very good analogy. I'm choosing to go into like maintenance mode um, with my, with, with, with my, my finances. Um, but for example, like I've had days where I've earned like, you know, $110,000 in a, in a day in 24 hours. And the problem with that is if you earn then 10 K in a day, it's not interesting. If you earn 20 K, it's not exciting 30, 40, like, but you need to be surpassing the level that you're at before to maintain a level of like you're progressing and you're kind of pushing forward. Uh, and again, like on my like monthly income, if I'm not making more than like 430 or $440,000 per month, um, it's just, it's just not exciting. Again, profit, $15,000 per day, uh, in, in profit is what I need to be earning for it to be, uh, exciting and, and interesting for me. The other thing is a kind of stopping businesses or habits that are no longer aligned with my goals or kind of where I want to be. And so I have a few things that I maybe set up like, um, uh, a year ago, a number of years ago, that at the time kind of served a purpose for me, but kind of no longer do. For example, like um, on like reels reposting or like TikTok reposting. Um, I mean, it even sounds funny to say, but I, I actually looked at it very much as we're kind of helping the community in, in, in one way, because in order for someone to set up a test of reposting on TikTok or on reels, they would need to buy a load of phones and they need to um, get a team member somewhere to do it. They need to get US SIM cards, um, set up all the proxies and VPNs. And it, it's like a hassle, it's like annoying to do. Whereas we have the phones and like resources that I just thought we can just kind of put something together to, uh, as a way for people to be able to set up the, these marketing channels and kind of test out if it works for them or not. The issue becomes that um, kind of the same issue as always with operating any black hat business is these platforms do change TikTok is kind of dead at the moment um, reels is going like really quite well um, but you yeah like what what is like the um, 
there, there's no real benefit for me in running these services, particularly if anyone knew like the profit margins that that, that, that we, we were working to. But it also helps our agencies to be able to run on these different platforms and see if it's profitable for their their creators. Um, the but and then we yeah. So the thing is, is that you're kind of fighting against these platforms. And again, for the returns that I get, it's not worth me investing uh, large amounts of time into um, like constantly fighting against these things when we have like other strategies and I have other like cash flow incomes that are already working very well that require no or very little time input from me as well as like no headaches. But the other thing is, it's like the type of clients that you deal with. Unfortunately, in OF. 95% of guys are um, have no idea what, 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 what they're kind of doing and the problem with OF is it's so easy to say that you run an agency, you basically only need to know one woman and you can basically start an OF agency and um, I, like there is, and this, I, I'm not just like talking about like low level here as well, even on a high level it is like ridiculous. There's a, a girl that I have um, met out here who's a, a, a chatter she manages a big chatting for a big page. She's a UK girl, um, and they are using no scripts. They're not. They're logged in through Safari. They're not using any type of software in order to manage the account. The account is doing seventy-five k in subscription revenue, and something like thirty k in message sales. And I'm telling her, like, tell your boss we can, like, fix this. Um, like and, and eat like 5x or even like 10x the, the ratio of, of the account. Um, so that account should be doing, I, I would say, a minimum 300k per month um, total. And if we're doing very well on it, depending on like the quality of the subs, up to like 700k per month. And because people are so fixed in their mindset, and this is the other issue with money, because this guy is making money, he's making about 100 to 120k per month, he has the delusion that he is running this page very well. Um, it, like he is the uh, husband, I think, of, of the model. So, and because he just doesn't know, and because technically they are making money, he is deluded into thinking he is managing this page very well. But in reality, um, it's like it's atrocious. There's no setup at all. They've got no idea of what like Creator Hero or Inflow is or whatever chatting management software like you want to use. They're just completely clueless. But because they're making money, they believe that they're they're doing everything right. So they have very good marketing. The girl is very good. She is very very good at bringing traffic to her page but they're not monetizing well and th there's just so many examples of things like this that I come across all the time um, so again and now kind of going into um, investing so there was this concept that I kind of came across uh, that I was introduced to by a friend of mine uh, of like the rat race and it basically means you are essentially you are in the rat race until you have a higher level of passive income than you need to support your life. And I have had that for a long time. However, I, I never decided to kind of step back and um, n not keep on working. So by having cash flow, I really feel it puts you in a very unique position as an investor because the same as it does with the business, because you don't need to, need to make any drastic decisions. You're not in a rush to make money. You don't need to make money to pay the bills. You're kind of financially comfortable um, and you have more money coming in every month that you're able to even deploy into new investment opportunities as and when they arise. Um, for example, in like the crypto markets at the moment, you can see very clearly who is like um, not comfortable in their position. Like my friend is messaging me that his position's down like 10K. And I'm down, I was down like 120K last week, like it, it's back up now. But it makes no no difference to my life at all. I have no plans on selling the asset. I don't need the money. Uh, and he's kind of panicking um, because he, he can't afford to lose the money because he doesn't have other cash flow. Whereas it puts me in a very unique position because even if it does go down and it does stay there, again, it doesn't have any real impact on my, um, or on my like day-to-day -day life. Of course, I prefer not to lose the money. Um, but I'm just comfortable and very confident in my thesis that the asset will, will increase. I will also be continuing my like overall goal of getting to $10 million. So again, like I said, this video isn't about me like becoming a, a hippie. It's more about me um, saying, changing the life structure and how I will be pursuing the path to $10 million. So the other point to make is as you earn and acquire more money, money essentially being a resource, 
it becomes for you to continue working and to outwork the rate that you can make money off of investments, even on like a baseline level, you can be making like 12 to 16% per year with a million dollars invested, um, which would be like 160K, so about $13,000 per month you're receiving passively for doing nothing. Whereas I'm not looking at those type of investment opportunities. I'm looking at doing um, a 2X every like one to two years, in some cases more. So in some cases it will maybe be like a three to four X, um, in some cases maybe like a, a little bit less, but not looking at doing like high volume trading, genuinely looking at, at investing. Um, and so what I mean by that is spending most of my time walking around, listening to audiobooks, absorbing information, following different narratives, collecting different theses, um, uh, building different theses, sorry, um, on prospective investments and pulling the trigger on maybe two or three investments per year that I have extremely high conviction on. So not looking at doing like high volume trading, maybe like when there's like these little like meme coins uh, going on, um, I'll have like a small uh, portfolio of like just kind of play around money um, just for like the, the fun of it, um, but nothing that I'm playing with like seriously. I'm looking for sensible, logical investments that, that really kind of make sense to me. Um, a few other points to kind of make out, it, it's, it's uh, a coincidence that um, the crypto markets are taking off at the time that I make this video. So it's not that I've kind of caught a pump and all of a sudden think that I'm, I'm a great investor. This has been something that has been um, on my mind for, for quite some time and it's purely a coincidence that, uh, that, um, that it's playing out at the same time that this happened. There's like a lot of different kind of things in my life, things popping up that are kind of telling me that this is like the, the, the correct move for me to make. Um, just on the subject like as well i won't be i don't want to push the channel into any like investment so you're not going to see me turning into into like a crypto influencer or anything like that i personally don't like giving investment advice um it's still going to be very much focused on you know life setup automation systems processes and kind of outthinking um the system so to speak thinking outside of um like avoiding like the nine to five and how to um kind of have like a very rewarding life by setting up and optimizing your life in kind of particular ways which is also why I put this video out there um, a sense of me like being like a, just telling my honest uh, thoughts and experience as I uh, climb, climb the ladder of success um, and just to I guess clarify my position on crypto whilst I'm on the subject as well so I actually mentioned in the like um, in my OnlyFans telegram group years ago uh, about 18 months ago, maybe about 18 months ago, that I felt OF was a fantastic business for generating cash flow and investing that cash flow into Bitcoin, which is what I was doing, uh, dollar cost averaging uh, of about $2,000 per day into Bitcoin all the way at the bottom, whilst no one, nobody was talking about crypto except for a few like high level guys that I know who were kind of doing the same thing. When everyone was scared, I was deploying capital every single day. Not talking about my thesis, just quietly deploying more and more capital. Um, and that has also paid off, uh, obviously, uh, pretty well for me. Um, I would consider myself uh, a Bitcoin maxi, um, but it doesn't mean that I don't have exposure to other asset classes. And when I say I'm going into investing, I am looking at a lot of other asset classes as well, predominantly within technology and software, because it's what I understand very well, AI as well. Um, but um, yeah, I, I'm open to a lot of other op opportunities, but in terms of crypto, um, the fundamentals of Bitcoin are very, very compelling to me. Owning your own asset when genuinely none of us own any, any other asset at all. Um, property can be taken from you very, very easily. If you, yeah, Andrew Tate was completely right on that. If you upset a government, uh, you'll find very quickly that the property is, is no longer yours. Um, plus, if we actually do some comparisons, my friend sent me over some charts of if you compare, if you compare property in the UK over the past nine years compared to the rate of inflation, property in London hasn't actually gone up at all. It's just maintained uh, value with, with the rate of inflation. So you actually haven't gained any purchasing power whatsoever. Uh, and if you look at almost every asset class compared to Bitcoin over the past um, 10 years, um, the property prices in London are going down significantly if you compare property prices to, to BTC. 
So, and I just simply love the most basic fundamentals of supply and demand and having a fixed supply. I've done quite a lot of research into like the gold supply banking system, fractional reserve um, banking, and all these different things. Again, I, I won't bore you with, but um, there's some really good audio books out there um, of really good books that, that you can kind of listen to to understand the whole system, how it works, and how, I th again, I think it's becoming more common knowledge these days, but how basically everyone is being uh, fucked by, by the financial system. Um, and yeah, and as the other point is just kind of me being patient as well. So when I mentioned just making like two or three moves per year, uh, despite there being maybe 90 good moves that I can make, I'm kind of waiting for the one fantastic move to, to come along. Um, so again, by having cash flow and, and just simply being patient and waiting for something to come along, so saying no to the 99 opportunities that come along and saying and executing on, on the one uh, that you feel there's like a true um, unique narrative um, behind. So um, yeah, I guess that is kind of my... Um, overview so i was reading that from a laptop just because i was trying to make it uh, a bit more clear because there's so many different areas that are kind of going over explaining my thought process behind this but essentially once you once you are working with a certain amount of capital um to see returns from investing uh, like kind of what life would you prefer to live um even if we just keep the maths very simple here um if i'm making like a hundred thousand dollars per month but it needs me to sit in front of my laptop all the time working dealing with stresses dealing with problems building out teams working the whole time not having true freedom not having time freedom or, or like uh, location freedom in some cases um but i'm able to take home 1.2 million per year um or would i prefer to spend my time traveling literally traveling wherever i want to walking around and exploring these places um, listening to audiobooks or podcasts on different uh, narratives, trying to like research different topics um, for me to be able to build up a, a solid thesis on, on investing and then just kind of making you know two or three investments per year um, and, and watching them kind of play out and still making uh, like a 50k base cash flow plus off of investing maybe an extra 100k to if you average it out over a year if I like double my portfolio it works out to be about 250k per month in income um yeah which, which option would you rather choose and the, the answer to me is kind of quite quite an obvious one um and i the other thing to say is it's not like i will never go back into running a business again like i said this this I, i'm like a, an entrepreneur and a, a very much a builder and maker of things at heart i really enjoy I think as many of you know the process of like building things of writing code um it's why i kind of release so many things and probably half of the stuff that i build i don't even release publicly I do, i'll just kind of build something in a weekend and never do anything with it um yeah i'm very much like a maker at, at heart and whenever i decide like maybe in a year or in a couple of years um i can always decide that i want to come back and like start a new new project be it a SaaS company or an e-commerce business or or whatever but right now i'm focusing on building out systems on hiring people um project managers project leads uh, coo um and various kind of people in that regard to syst to to systemize myself out of the business the other very interesting takeaway i would say actually is um ironically i have a funny feeling this month i'm actually going to earn more money because i'm operating at a much more like higher level at the moment only working on ten thousand dollar per hour tasks having like a bird's eye view over the business as a whole rather than me being focused on like the day-to-day -day tasks um sometimes the biggest thing holding back the business can, can simply be you by wanting to control too much and I, I saw this directly with one of my old business partners um he was very much a control freak and he just didn't realize that he was actually the biggest hindrance to the business by him wanting to have ownership of so many different departments in the business um, which it, it was just physically impossible for him to do. Uh, it was a hindrance for, for, for the growth of, of the business. And I've kind of noticed that myself. Uh, I'll still be publishing videos, but predominantly on um, building out systems, processes, teams, uh, and, and setting up like a very interesting life, uh, life structure uh, on how to like live, <laughs> without sounding too cliche, but 
kind of live the best possible life, like ha having the best setup that's possible to you. The other like really, um, and I can honestly say like I've been following this kind of new uh, life setup of um, walking every day, listening to audiobooks, and I've never felt, not never, but I, I'm feeling like really, really good. I've also made some changes in terms of like diet, uh, following a primal eating diet. So basically only eating whole foods, which means like single source foods as in vegetables, meats, nuts. Um, also one of the biggest, the highest quality improvements uh, that money is, is able to bring to you in terms of life quality and happiness, I would say, is um, eating the highest quality of foods. I really like the saying that you wouldn't put fish fat oil in a Ferrari. You would put the highest quality um, fuel into a Ferrari and if you kind of value your uh, your body like your mind how everything is, is interconnected you want to be giving your body and your mind the highest quality of fuel that you can for it to perform at its best and I don't mean even in terms of sports of course it applies to sports as well but just in terms of day-to-day -day mental function mental clarity um, so I've been spending I've been um, just consuming like the highest quality foods uh, a lot of um, yeah, just if no processed foods, no sugars, no vegetable oil. And if I cannot tell you all of the ingredients on a particular thing on my plate, it means like it's processed and has been mixed together. Um, so I'm just eating whole greens, um, steaks, chicken, uh, oysters, um, organic, grass fed, uh, freshly caught things so this is uh, there was a book called deep nutrition that i can recommend you to to listen to as well really really good book and so i've been kind of following the eating principles based off of that and my body is literally i feel so good like it's like your body is saying thank you um for like cleaning out all of the shit within your uh, within my system as i've eaten a pretty uh, processed diet of a lot of uh, just ordering takeaways, ordering like food delivery services, <laughs> simply for um, for convenience, um, so that it doesn't doesn't take up more time. Um, yeah, and like so another interesting fact for you from that book is uh, even eating like whole vegetables. You by uh, from the time of picking like leafy greens, if you refrigerate it for seven days, it's already lost seventy seven percent of its nutritional content. Um, so really like spending that extra money on getting fresh, healthy, whole foods, um, organic, not sprayed with things, really caring about the process of how that food is coming from the, from the ground on, onto your plate. Um, yeah, has been a, a really, really positive impact for me as well. Another thing I did have a thought of to kind of balance out my karma was potentially doing a, uh, a like no fat channel um and so again just going back into um outwitting the devil that is one of the things that he really talks about is being in control of your sexual urges as a man and me having worked in the of space for so many years i just couldn't agree more um men are, you can literally just be controlled and it, like for everyone else working in this space as well they know just as well as i do um men are literally controlled by, by their sexual urges both online you can even see like a very successful guy if like a beautiful woman walks in uh, he kind of loses um loses his composure around uh, around the, these women so um another thing i've been looking into is uh like exploring is abstinence um so uh, like semen retention essentially um just just to like not be wasting energy on like casual encounters, meaningless casual encounters. Um, and it's only something I've been looking at very recently, but the other one I can tell you is like cut out all, hopefully if you're working in the OF space, you've done this already, um, but cutting out like all pornography for, from your life, any um, negative, cut out everything that isn't kind of serving your goal. But just as a man, I think one of the biggest weaknesses most men have is giving in to their kind of sexual urges and they're able to have people like wrap them around their finger um, just because they're, they're thinking we're with the wrong head. There's another thing to mention, probably the most satisfaction that I get at, at the moment is from helping people. Um, genuinely, I, I can say that. There's 
a handful of people whose lives have kind of changed, who have gone from doing having no money in their bank account or making very little um, to doing six figures plus per month and I get thank you messages for it from them. That is a really, really good feeling. Um, uh, like it's a selfish feeling. Like um, I do it because I know that I will get that good feeling. So it's not just in my good charity or good nature. I, I like the feeling of helping people. Um, that's another one to mention as well, like is um, being able to like not retire my parents, but I, I just pay for my parents' mortgage um, because in the UK prices have gone up massively. Um, so they're just like very comfortable. I don't, even both my parents are really quite active. Um, I, I think my dad would go mad if he, uh, if he went into retirement, like he kind of needs to be occupied doing something. Um, but just to pay for their, their mortgage is like a really nice feeling. I just sent them on the holiday to Costa Rica, going around the, the um, rainforest and jungle of, of Costa Rica. That, and they're things that give like a, a lot of, of satisfaction. But again, by, like you don't need insane money to, to do that. Next up, like as much as I'm all talking about uh, th these things about money, I will say um, that I still plan, like my current goal is still to get to a, a net worth of $10 million. Um, I just plan to use very different vehicles in order to get there. I don't plan on trading my time for the next two years or three years to, to get there. So my original goal was like 10 million before 30. Um, and now I've just kind of changed that. Like I, I will still get there like regardless, um, but I know that it, it doesn't make any um, significant difference to like the quality of, of my life. Um, so I don't need to trade my time, time being a finite asset, the only finite asset that we have, um, choosing where to deploy my capital in order for it to work for me and generate me more capital. And that is how I will achieve the goal of getting um, to, to ten million dollars in net worth, whilst simultaneously I will have bought back all of my time, which I have already done. Um, and the other interesting concept that I really like is sell your brain and, and not your time. And this is very clever. And again, like courses, kind of get like a bad um, reputation. Um, personally. The problem, the thing I hate about courses is that anyone can just copy all the things that you've spent ages figuring out, record a load of videos, talking, just, it's like me reading a book uh, and then absorbing all that information and then re-recording the same book and selling it. And people do it. For me, it's like completely shameless. People do it in the OF space as well. Um, you'll notice, uh, yeah, <laughs> you'll, you'll notice this a, a lot in this space. Whereas I feel that the person who spends the time to kind of figure out the strategies and then implement those strategies as well and sell that information. I, I'm personally fine with it, as long as you are figuring out those strategies yourself, which is what we've always done. The thing I think people don't realize is all these tools that are like industry standard now, three U tools I've been using for years because in my agency before this, four years ago now, we used to use it for our Instagram marketing agency. And it, it's like an unheard of tool. Uh, and, and that is how like I released it and now of course uh, that is what everyone used and it, uh, I, I spoke, not released it, sorry, I spoke about it and it kind of became the standard for everyone to use. Airtable as well, Automate, all just, the kind of tech stack of OF uh, is, is very much something that was for me and of course other course creators. They don't actually, they're not experienced in these things, they've just heard me talking about it and then got like an understanding of, of how to use it. Um, and, and there is like a big difference. And the other thing that people talk about is um, if something is working so well, why sell that information? And the reason is, so if I have a strategy on reels that is working incredibly well, um, it doesn't mean it's going to be lasting forever. So I can kind of make the calculation that, um, let's, and not a case of like it's gonna be shut down next week, but let's say that we get six months out of this particular strategy, um, is a, a faster and easier way for me to scale, particularly if it's like on a high, um, uh, on like a, a high user platform um, for me to sell and just let other people scale, for me to sell the strategy and let other people scale as well. And often the answer is actually yes. You, um, you monetize the strategy through selling it, plus you monetize the strategy through doing it yourself. Um, and then you, 
sell the strategy to other people, they come on, on board as well. And it's not a case of oversaturation, it really isn't. It's, it's a case of, um, of, of the, the platforms fighting against you. For example, I have the perfect example of this uh, just a few weeks ago. If people saw the breastfeeding strategy on, on Instagram, um, we, would, we were doing the breastfeeding strategy and on brand new accounts, we had a lot of accounts getting like 3 million views. Uh, no post, no followers, no following, and it will go to like 5k followers overnight. First post would be, would be breastfeeding. And then just uh, a, a couple of days later, it just stopped. And it's not because of oversaturation, uh, it's because Instagram has decided to block this. So that was a bad, uh, quite a, a sad example. I thought that we would get at least a few months out of it. Uh, but yeah, to, in terms of like selling information, as long as you kind of provide new strategies, when other strategies stop working, I'm, I'm kind of all for it, to be completely honest. Speaking of, I have version three of the OnlyFans course uh, coming out. So for all existing members, they will be upgraded for free. I'm gonna to try to do it like every year or so, every 12 months. Um, and sometimes throughout the year, I'll, I'll push out some, some kind of more videos, with new new strategies and, and things that, that we're working on. The only, like I guess, other thing is like, the thing that takes up a lot of, a lot of like financial resource is if you're buying uh, real estate. Uh, if you need to make like a large deposit, like the type of properties that I would be looking at these days would be several million dollars. Um, but I also don't actually see the upside currently of owning real estate. I think because the world is in such a... Um, there's a lot of uh, open loops, let's say, that I think we need to see how they play out. And I think one of the best positions that you can be in uh, as an individual, as an investor, as an entrepreneur, is simply in being adaptable and being able to move quickly. Um, not that I, I think like the world's going to end, uh, but I think that there's, there's kind of a possibility of, of uh, not even possibility, a high likelihood that within our lifetimes, um, it, even in the next like decade or so, that there can be something quite serious that kind of takes place. Of course, I hope that it doesn't. Um, but as an individual, you need to make sure that you are able to be adaptable in, in, in moving your location. So I'm not really that motivated to buy any, any property at the moment anywhere in the world. Um, well, I have got property already, but I, I'm actually even thinking of selling because I think that I can just triple that money um, passively through, through, through investment. Fortunately, I no longer need to do anything that, that I don't want to, um, as a very good saying from the layer cake goes. And yeah, um, I, I will kind of follow this process for like of, of learning as much as possible and investing. I also think it's great just to be like having for like six or eight hours per day, I'm just absorbing information from very, very smart people. Um, I feel I'm, I'm feeling very, very sharp at the moment. Um, I think it would be a good way, good way to describe it. Um, and yeah, but if ever I choose that I want to change my mind and, and get back into the rat race of, of pursuing more money, um, it's very easy for, for me to do so. So this is a very easy decision for me to make because it's also very reversible if, if ever I decide um, that I, I change my mind on it. So with that, I hope, um, I hope that you received value from this video, um, be it now or be it in several years down the line, perhaps you're uh, dealing with some type of similar problem or feeling lost in earning of like financial resources. Um, I'm more than happy to like connect with anyone who's on, uh, yeah, in, in like a similar, similar stage in life. That's the other thing that I'm starting to work on a lot more is like building out of my, my network. Whereas before as an entrepreneur, I was very much a, a kind of lone wolf operating, but by myself. To my own detriment, to be honest, but it's just because naturally I'm I'm introverted. Um, I, I'm very happy and always have done, always have operated on my own. Final thing that I'll, I'll give you um, just before we before we part ways. Um, I, for whatever reason, this is something that's kind of a taboo subject to talk about. I personally don't don't really care. Um, Going, I, I've been speaking to a, a therapist, um, Sadia Khan. I'm sure many of you will have seen her. She's been on quite a few podcasts. She is really good. She's based out of Dubai. Um, and 
because she's quite young, she's like in tune with, with the modern world. So it's not like you're talking to like some 60 year old therapist trying to explain to her what Instagram is or like what OnlyFans is or um, like the dynamics and kind of like a modern relationship or, or um, as like an individual, like how it can be living in like Dubai um, or, or like or whatever. Um, she, she's young, so she's very like in tune with, with the modern world. So I've done two sessions with her. She's 250 pounds an hour, so about $300 per hour. So I appreciate she'll be out of the budget for like quite a, a lot of people. Um, but I was talking to her about, um, I mentioned this before, but I, I was adopted um, and I have some f like, n not even consciously. So the thing I was very impressed by her by, she asked me a couple of questions about my relationships, about my childhood. And I explained like uh, a couple of points to her. And she had me sussed out within about five minutes. It was literally like a scene out of a movie, like someone's reading a script of, of your, your life and, and your relationships. So that was honestly quite impressive. Um, and I can't say that she like solved everything for me. She She's very honest, which I also like. She literally just said that many of these things like... You, you may live with them for your whole life, but perhaps we can work on them and see some improvement uh, and maybe like remove them altogether. Um, but it's not something that's going to happen over even like weeks or months. It's, it's going to be like a lot of work for a lot of a lot of years. So even then I was thinking like, actually, how much does this uh, does this mean to me? But um, the, the point is the biggest thing that I've had is her kind of explaining to me why my thought processes, some of my thought patterns, why I maybe react or feel certain ways in certain situations, um, maybe why I'm evasive or avoidant or naturally a, an introvert. Um, just having that kind of explained to you, I found to be very, very powerful. Um, so now I'm like consciously aware, I have an understanding of my subconscious mind and if I react a certain way to a situation, I can say like, no, Nathan, that's... Uh, um, even things in cases that perhaps I would like blame some of my previous partners for, um, I realize are actually, uh, me, it's my own, um, it's my, my own issue, but you can project that blame outside. Like you, you, you don't want to look at your, your own mind and realize that it's you causing, causing a problem. So yeah, just having awareness of these like thought patterns and processes that go on in, in your mind, I think is really, really powerful, um, because we are our decisions very much led by our subconscious mind so we may as well have an understanding of not only how the subconscious mind works but more specifically how your subconscious mind works uh, as they say like a brain surgery can't perform uh, wouldn't perform brain surgery a brain surgeon wouldn't perform brain surgery on, on himself i think with psychology it's very it's, it's very very similar to have um a very smart person that's that doesn't know you personally, you're not friends with, there's no, they have no intrinsic motivation, you've already paid them their rate. Um, their sole motivation is to kind of help, to, is to listen to you and to kind of help you and give feedback and kind of correct you with no emotional connection or no emotional attachment, like um, friends or family or whatever. They're always going to be biased to, to kind of being on your side. Maybe they don't want to tell you like the harsh reality of things. Um, or maybe they just haven't got an understanding that they're not able to do so. Whatever the case may be, I've really found that to be quite good. So my recommendation is kind of for anyone who has some form of, of childhood trauma, um, which is probably most people. Uh, I know very, very few people. So again, this isn't me playing like some sympathy card or something. It's one thing that I, I really hate people doing online is when they're going on about what a rough childhood they have and the reality is there's always someone that's had it much much worse so I never complain about anything that happened to me in fact my childhood had like a very positive outcome I was adopted into a family who gave me a much better life and I wouldn't be wouldn't be in this position that I am today um if, if that hadn't happened so um I have a full um uh, appreciation for for all of the things that happened to me both both good and bad um However, you will carry along some form of like mental baggage from, uh, from, from childhood trauma. So it, even if like whatever it may be, may, perhaps a divorce or perhaps you had a very distant and cold parents or, uh, you know, alcoholic or family, like uh, abuse within the family or sexual, like whatever it may be, um, 
to kind of have the courage to go into that and to to understand it and understand how it affects your your mind today your day-to-day -day thought processes and, and your decision making um has really has really been been quite good for me so that's um it's had a good impact on my life again i can't i haven't solved anything i, I think all my issues are still there but simply by having an awareness of of them gives you and, and having an understanding of them of them gives you a certain power over them of noticing these um processes w w within your mind so um yeah quite a deep deep uh thing to kind of leave it on but again i hope this video was uh were, was valuable um yeah, I'm really looking forward to this kind of next stage of, of the journey. And uh, yeah, thank you for, if you've watched it all the way uh, through here, I, I'm not just saying it genuinely, thank you for um, your kind of support and, and, and yeah, and, uh, and watching the, the content that I put out.